Welcome to Talking Live. I'm Dr. Robbie Ludwig out of Starshop Studio in Times Square. Have you ever wanted to know a little bit more about wine or come off a little bit more like a wine expert than you really are? Well, today we actually have an internationally renowned natural wine expert. She's a journalist and she's an author and she's just come out with her fourth book right here, The Dirty Guide to Wine. It's really, really different. Alice Firing, thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having me, Rob. So this is your fourth book. It is my fourth book, depending on how you count. Mm -hmm. Well, <laughs> how else do you count? Uh, well, it's my sixth book, but it's my okay. fourth book that was not work for hire. Well, so. this, what I love when I was doing research for this book, mm -hmm. Um, you really identify wines in a very different way. So most people think of wines, they think of the year, right? What year is a good wine? Well, mm -hmm. for people who are like right. me, okay, right. who, who are novices really, the year, the kind of grape, mm -hmm. maybe, grape. maybe where it's from, the, the so bottle, much. how it, yeah, looks, it looks, if the bottle's pretty. A nice label, um, it always works. And the cost, right? The cost, exactly. And the cost, okay. But Alice describes looking for wine and the right wine in a very different way based on the soil. So tell me a little bit more about how you got well, inspired and where this idea came from. I got inspired by this idea because I really started thinking how meaningless it is to go up to a bar and say, I would like your Malbec. Mm -hmm. Because Malbec is actually a style. Most people who ask for Malbec, they'll be saying, I want an Argentinian, big, sunny, hefty wine. Mm -hmm. So I could totally put their world into upend if I gave them a wine from the Loire Valley. Okay. The same grape, the original grape of Malbec, mm -hmm. like Co, C-O-T. And they would go like, what is this? This isn't Malbec. So when we order by grape, we're really thinking style. And what this has done is it's obliterated the sense of country. So now it matters less the country that exactly. you're getting a wine from. Exactly. Now, if I ask for a Sauvignon Blanc, mm -hmm. which I like, mm -hmm. do I need to consider anything else? If I'm looking at wine now the way you recommend mm -hmm. I look at wine, right. I probably need to get a big education. No, yeah. but, but if for the person that's out there that really is a novice that said, you know what, I just want to pick a great wine to bring to a summer barbecue, mm -hmm. or I want to impress somebody and order a wine that shows I know what I'm doing, mm -hmm. what would they do? Well, first I would, it's really diagnostic. <laughs> okay, so tell me a little bit about who you're going to see and what level of impressing you want. So if you want to impress maybe a first date, okay, so what would you do? Um, or what would that who person you do? Basically, so you want to impress so either this person has some knowledge mm -hmm. and you'd like to bring something, they'll go, oh, smart choice or mm -hmm. interesting choice. Okay. I'd always advise somebody to go for the interesting choice. And uh, probably one of my favorite summer things to bring is an interesting choice. Okay, so you brought some I examples brought, for us. But so actually we will, after the show, have a link and, and some of the names mm -hmm. of the wines that you yeah. recommend so that people can actually go out and get it because yeah. they're at every right. wine store or some wine store. Well, it may be. I do like wines that you basically need to hunt and pet for. Okay. So you can't really go down to the supermarket or you have to go to a, a good wine shop. So can you order it online? Yes, some but, on? the, okay. but it is. It's not too difficult um, to find, especially one reason that I always recommend a good Muscadet. Mm -hmm. And now, what I does have that to say, taste good like? I, honestly, I've never even heard of that kind of wine. But I know you've had it because you've had it in my house. <laughs> oh, oh, okay, 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 okay. Okay, but okay, so it is from the Loire, where you think Sauvignon Blanc is from. Okay. So it's a little bit further uh, west, right on the Atlantic. But what it is to me and why I love it for the summer, it's like I think of it as an air conditioner in a bottle. Oh. It's so refreshing and it's wonderful and it's, it's a cheap wine that inexpensive, I should say, okay. that ages beautifully. So is this something that someone could bring to a summer barbecue yes. and, and people would be impressed and enjoy it Yes. and you won't be breaking the back? No, no not at all. Actually, okay. incredibly inexpensive. And by good, I'm talking about 
organic, at least organic viticulture. Okay. Maybe biodynamic. So I should tell you thing. the truth is the that, truth is fast. No, up. wait a minute. The truth <laughs> is is that you introduced me to organic wines. I did not know the difference. I, I knew the difference between a white wine and a red wine, and that was basically it. And I was having headaches after I right. would have wines. And I and I it, it was a little sad. I kind of wrote off red wine because mm. I knew that there was something in there that gives people headaches. But the white wine I wasn't really ready to to write off. And you recommended I go for an organic mm -hmm. because there's less preservatives and chemicals in yeah, it. Chemicals. And it was like a cure all and plus it tastes really good. So okay. So and I know that there's a difference between organic and natural, there's or is there not? There, there is. Okay. So we're talking about the viticulture organic used in this farming. Okay. Very important and no irrigation. And, okay, fine. And how does and it stop from and being then, spoiled? And um, then, but then we have to go into the winery. Okay. Okay, so that's just the grape. Then the winery, there are 72 plus perfectly legal additives that can go into your wine. And, oh, I would say a normal wine might have 15 of them. Okay. So that's quite a lot. So the wines that I advocate for and write about have none. Except have none. none. Except Zero. maybe, except maybe a little bit of added sulfite. Mm -hmm. And by little, there's, it's 260 parts per million that is allowed. And that means nothing until I say it, tell you. But the ones that I recommend have 40 ppm and less. Now, I just want to tell people difference. because you also have something, a newsletter have a newsletter. called the Firing Line. And we will also set up a link for this so that you can read Alice's blog and recommendations, and you can even sign up to get more extensive mm -hmm. knowledge. And we also, I think, have a JPEG right here. Here we go. Um, and so there is more in-depth information. And in the future, we're going to see a website where we, it's kind of like the goop of wines. We're basically going to know where to go in France and Georgia if you want to get the right wine, right? Mm -hmm. That's organic and natural. And there's something else that you mentioned when we were uh, preparing for this okay. segment. Biodynamic? Bio oh, yeah, I, don't, I don't even know what that is. Okay. Versus conventional. So right. biodynamic is what? It's also a form of organic viticulture, but okay. it goes beyond. So organic viticulture uh, is really chemical based, but they're allowed. Use, okay. You know, like kind of do no harm kind of chemicals, okay. depending. Should on we try it. some of this? Oh, uh, why not? All right. So, go, like, um, so let me ask because I went out and I bought glasses. Yes. Um, I this is mine, right? This is yes, mine. Yes, so I just asked for what you could tell. What looks very pretty? Easy. And uh, <laughs> I don't know if this is for red wine or white wine. I don't Great. know. So I figured you would help me with that. Okay. Again, so we can sound impressive during our summer parties, soirees. And you brought this. I brought this. So you actually, these are your these two are mine. glasses. Yes, these okay. are mine. So you can see they're pretty different. Is this a red? Well, or I like using a universal glass. Oh. I love using one glass for okay. everything, including champagne. Oh. So I don't so like this could be for red or exactly. white, exactly, and, and this can be red, for or, red white. or white. In fact, this is called universal, and I really dislike the idea of, um, of well, actually, this is a Zalto company, Zalto out of Austria, um, I think now out of Germany, actually, and this is Riedel out of Germany, um, and Riedel is known for having a million different glasses mm -hmm. for whatever wine, mm -hmm. and I think it's ludicrous. And so I love so this because it's good marketing? for everything. Do you think it's marketing? It is marketing. Okay. I mean, yeah, who needs three different glasses? Right. But one reason that I like, the most important th thing for me in the glass is how thin the edge. Oh, okay. Now, if you see this, it's got a little kind of a bubble on the... This is what, <laughs> this is what you but get when you pay $5. <laughs> but I think I have those, too. <laughs> right, okay. I think okay. I have those, too. Now, if it's but thinner, this has a thinner, what's better and this about is thinnest. A, okay, so what's better about a thinner glass versus a thicker okay. glass? Okay, well... Uh, what is different? It's really just the, the rim, just right here. Uh -huh. The way it sh this is going to sound really too geeky for a lot of people, but, but the like way it. the way it shoots the wine into your mouth, uh -huh. and basically, so instead of like a big mouthful of water that you just like slop you. See, this mouth. is why you're critically acclaimed <laughs> by critics when they read Alice's description yeah. because you you describe wines like nobody else. Really, you bring it to life. So. All right, so what are but we trying to But it shoots it into a very specific part on your tongue, so you actually get maximum taste. Okay. I love that. I love that. So what are we and trying for? The less expensive of the two? Oh, yeah, why don't we, why okay. don't we do that? This All is right. so easy. I don't need a corkscrew. Yes, there can be 
good ones, and a Stelvin, this Stelvin I'll call Screw Cap. Okay. It's not totally, but it is kind of unromantic. It's not corked. That was a um, so, but I think for like a summer party, I think it's nice to have something that doesn't require a corkscrew. It, it actually, these are really okay. great for barbecues or whatever. It's very easy to twist off, and I prefer to canned oh, wines, which a yeah. lot of people are drinking canned oh, wines. Oh, really? I can't say I'm a fan. Yeah, that doesn't seem okay. I'm so going to use my beloved Zalto. Yeah, go ahead. Use this I do. Glass. I okay. worship this glass. It is. It's expensive. It's like a fifty-five dollar glass. Oh, oh my God. Yeah. Versus my five dollar glass, but. We were thinking along the same lines. We, we okay. were. And it's now everybody's going to know the difference between a real expensive <laughs> okay, one. Let's go and All right, cheers. 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 Do I and have I'll to smell it? You don't have to, but why do people do that? Because it smells. It gives you clues about what. It gives you clues. You should always. What if it's poison? You should always oh, smell your. Yeah, food. I guess so. I guess that's a good point. I know. Okay. I've been smelling everything from the time I was born. Oh my and god! This is so delicious. And it's a little bit too warm, but it's delicious. And it's, it's still delicious. And it's twelve or fifteen dollars. And it's organic grapes. It's so made let's from look at this. one okay. of my favorite. I'm just hold this up. Joe Landrone is one of my favorite producers in and the And this is the Muscadet. beautiful. The label is gorgeous as well. Yeah, he always plays with them. But yeah. what's better is that Joe is like a great guy, uh -huh. and he makes great wine. And where is this person from? He's from the Muscadet, which is the western part of the Loire, right on the Atlantic. Okay. And since my book is all divvied up into soil types. Mm -hmm. So this is in the, actually, he's not on granite. Um, this is a mix of his soils, and he has um, a lot of metamorphic soils here. Mm -hmm. um, where is just because mostly I like Muscadet from granite soils, but this one is not. But this one um, but is so the, the exception to the rule. It, yeah. Okay. So the grape is Melon B. Or it used to be called Melon de Bourgogne, but mm -hmm. the people in Burgundy didn't like that. Okay. So they made them stop. All right. Now they have they to call it melon. Oh, people. Uh -huh. And um, and what it is, it's, it is refreshing. It and is. And this is why it's just, the acidity is high. It's almost a little salty, too. It, it tastes a little sweet as well. Am I tasting something that's not there? <laughs> it's just kind of bone dry. <laughs> but it smells floral. Okay, this is maybe actually, that's it. This is actually one of the most aromatic mm. muscadets, which is not an aromatic grape. But 2015 was a very ripe year. Okay. So you're going to get more fruit for it, but it is actually now, bone dry. Now, if somebody walks into a wine store and yeah. they want to get good information and they know nothing, mm -hmm. what kind of wine store should they go to to get some someone who's knowledgeable? Well, what state are we talking about? Well, let's mm. say New York. Just Well, New York. If we're in New York City, boy, are you in, you're in just in luck. Okay. Right? So... Downtown, you have Chamber Street, and these people can, they ship all over New York mm -hmm. State, so it's really, you just go to the website, see what they have. This does come from Chamber Street. Um, they are dedicated to natural, organic, and biodynamic wines. Okay. So that's pretty much their, their thing. There's Flatiron, there's 67 Wine and Spirits. Um, Brooklyn has a bunch with uh, Thirst Wine Merchants, and... Uh, but we could also centers. go to you, right, and, and you go, can go to, to me. your yes. um, your recommendations from your newsletter to find out in different locations where people right. can go for a wine, let's say, that's ex exactly. inexpensive, but really good, mm -hmm. um, that's made in the right yeah. dirt, right? The right With soil. The right dirt. <laughs> With the right dirt? Yeah. With the right dirt? I think we have a picture of you and your co-author? Right, Pascaline. Um, Pascaline, we, we have a picture of the two of you with... That's I us. guess mud on your face. What yes. is on the face? We um, it is a uh, week. I, I can't even talk anymore. One sip of wine and it goes away. <laughs> clay. Oh, it's so clay. I got a clay mask. We made a bunch of um, promotional videos that were really super fun. Mm -hmm. And clay is really important in 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 viticulture. It's and to actually play with the clay masks that you put on, you can actually see what it does in the rain. Interesting. So that's what we were kind of having fun with. And so how did you realize all of this, that it matters the, not only the grapes or the year, but the soil? I mean, is this something that's really out there in the wine time. community? So this is something that mm -hmm. experts know, sommeliers know. Definitely sommeliers. They studied it. I yeah. never studied it. Okay. Is that something that you ever considered studying? or? Uh, no. Uh, I, have a, I have a complicated relationship with the whole sommelier thing. Mm -hmm. And that kind of very formalized knowledge. It's, um, no, so no, I never, I never wanted to 
only write about one. Oh. It happened to me. Oh my goodness. You didn't know that. I didn't know that. See the things I learned on my show. What do you want to write about? I just want to write fiction and <laughs> essays and I would just and I needed to be a writer. So yeah. I went to journalism. I wrote about some things that I knew about, like food, wine and design. And then lo and behold, I wrote my first book proposal and I actually after my first book, I spent a lot of time in the vineyards and I really got passion. Yeah. being in the vineyard. There's something about actually going back to soil and dirt that, and the way it changes the wine mm -hmm. that um, is thrilling to me. Yeah, I mean, but I didn't expect it. You do bring it to life. Now, what other wines do we have here that okay. you would recommend? This is actually an, um, this is an Albarino. Do we need to open this with this, something Let's like open this? this? Okay. And this is, is there a, something wrong with this one? This was cheap too. <laughs> <laughs> It is. Okay, let's talk about this. Yeah. I hate this. Okay. Um, it's okay. You, We're because friends. You can be honest. Though they, look, this one looks good. Basically, really, I do everything wrong, good. but people are friends but with look, me anyway. Yeah. Look, Robbie, we broke but I know. Well, I was thinking bright. You know. Yeah, I know. It's good. It looks good on... Does it look right. good? Right. But, but they, what's wrong with this? They destroy corks. They destroy ah, too many yeah. corks. Um, and it's... Just there's no finesse. So if you've got a funky cork, it can right. crumble it. Yeah, this doesn't. Work. You have way more control I don't with the old cool. fashioned. We're putting this away. Okay. With the old fashioned. So now fashion what is this? I'm, gonna, I'm just going to hold this up so people. What kind of wine is this? This is a uh, non Claris, which is an Alber well, the the winemaker is Alberto non Claris, and we're now if Muscadet is on the west, just go south directly, and you hit the north of Spain, okay. and that's where we are at Ribera Sacra, okay. and. Um, well, actually, not Rivera Sacra. I just totally screwed that up. We are in Russia Vicious. So it's right, um, an hour, like a half hour away from Rivera Sacra. So it's right on the coast, right next to Portugal. Okay. And the wine that they are known for is Albarino. Oh, it's beautiful. And it is another air conditioner in and the bottle. And it's called Dandelion. <laughs> it is Dandelion. Now, what happens if you really like the person who's making the wine, but you don't like the wine? Has that ever happened to I you? Think, yes, it does happen, okay. and it's it's unfortunate. Yeah. But as it turns out, I love Joe. Okay. I love Alberto, and both of these are really good wines. This is extra special. This is um, bring it to a dinner party, or and how a much small is something barbecue. like this? This is probably twenty five. I mean, this and not, is, that's not breaking the bank. I no, mean, it's kind of like a nice host. It is, host and this or is also gift, right? it's kind of an, a wine that needs decanting. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it can take some age, so that's so, good. Did you want to open that or no? I don't we're know. Not, no, we're well, not. No, open no, that. we're just like we're just going to work you know, the rest of just, this. We're just going to work pour. it. Uh, so we have a segment. Okay. Here we are. Called segment. keeping it real. Let's try. And um, okay. Yeah. How do you spend your free time? Now, Alice is rarely here. We're lucky that she's in <laughs> New York because she's always in Georgia, Spain, France. It's it's hard to get in contact with you. Yeah. Yeah. So what do you do during your free time? Oh, dear. I don't have much. Um, I'm kind of a workaholic, as you are. Yeah, a little <laughs> bit. We, we are fortunate that we love what we do. And the funny right. thing is, is that we met from a totally different field. We both were in a psychiatric hospital, not as patients. <laughs> We were actually treating people. We are now. That sounds really bad. Like, I know we, we were ill, that. and now we're not. But no, that's not true. We might have not been well, but we were, on the but other we were side. inside. We, we, had were we had the keys. We had the keys. So we kind of segued into, into our, our passion. I mean, mine yeah. was kind of connected, and yours segued in a totally different direction. No, I was. I remember being on the substance. Yeah. Being, not being, but working on the substance abuse unit yeah. and thinking, why can I do this? Yeah. Because I was writing about wine at the time. And I was oh. like, why can I do this? And I spent a lot of time feeling guilty about it. Uh -huh. Like, I can drink and you guys can't. This doesn't yeah. seem fair. That is some place to be <laughs> if you're know. writing about wine. I on know. A, Actually, on I should probably where steal it for plot line. You know? Yeah, um, I see and, the conflict. <laughs> yeah, yeah. See, I was able to drink okay. where I was. So what okay. do I do in my downtime? Yes, I have instruments that I don't play much, um, and I, I love to dance. I yes. do something called Morris dancing. What is Morris dancing? It is British ritual dancing. Yeah. And so uh, I've been doing it for a long time. And if you see anybody on the street with handkerchiefs and bell pads or big sticks, and they're in a set of six with the musician. 
Right, I know it's ridiculous. I, uh, but yeah, I no, but I'd like to see that. I mean, hopefully you'll hopefully. invite me. Okay, <laughs> what does a perfect day look like to you? Oh, that is really hard uh, because I don't have fun. You know, it's very hard for me to have fun. What is a perfect day that is not X rated that I can say on the air? Um, hmm. Let's you can see. be X rated. Yeah, I don't think they'll block us. Yeah, it's probably more fun. Them, yes, but, <laughs> but at perfect, God. I don't, I don't know. You know is, this is probably worth me going back and yeah, just asking. Yeah, all right. Well, we I can, just can't think we of can, that. We can come back to it. Now, working what, and getting things done is a What would you day. do if you were invisible for a day? See, I know the answer to that question you do. for me. Well, for me. If I were invisible, maybe I should have gotten these questions yeah. from you ahead of time. <laughs> Here is. I were invisible, who would I want to spy on? Yeah, so you'd spy on people. Just, what I mean, else? I think what? That's a, yeah, that's kind of good. Like, you know, like. And three famous people, living or dead, that you would want at your fantasy dinner party. You know, isn't it odd that nobody's ever asked me this question? I, I know, I know. That's why we say keeping it real here. Philip Roth, about. if you're out there, can you please come to dinner? There we go, and you'll have some really good wine. Well, okay. this has been amazing. I want everybody to go out and at least read the reviews, which are incredible. Alice's book are, books are also multilingual. So they're in French, they're in Spanish, they're in Portuguese, they're in Georgian, and they're in languages I can't even say. But fortunately, we have it in English. So this is great. I mean, I think a lot of people don't think about the dirt that the grapes are, are grown in affecting the wine and the quality of wine. We're also going to have a link to Alice's uh, newsletter, which is going to turn into a website, which is going to give great recommendations that you can't get anywhere else. And we are just so thrilled that you were here with us today, sharing information. And now we will share it with all of you so you'll know what wines to choose, what wines to get, and you'll be all set for your summer soiree. Thank you for joining us, and we will be here next Monday at 6. See you then.